What's up Legionnaires and welcome back. We're here with another Rise of Mordor Battle for you today. And today we're using the 5 sub Mordor uh, sub mod along with the uh, Rise of Mordor sub mod and the Battle of the Trident map, strangely. So we have a weird like Game of Thrones slash Lord of the Rings mix. But we have um, we have Eriador here fighting Anflas, which is one of the Gondorian regions of, uh, well, well, Gondorian regions. There's not much else to say. Um, these guys look pretty cool. They look okay. They look just like sort of like militia. They don't quite have the, like the armor. They have like leather armor going on. Um, but yeah, they look pretty cool actually. We've got uh, Lord Goz Goz Gozalagil. I don't know how you say his name. Gozal. I there he is anyway. He's looking pretty damn fine. I won't say if I don't say so myself. He's looking ready for battle. He's got a stern face on. But yeah, so it looks like it's going to be a bit of a river crossing battle. We're starting with some uh, skirmishing. We have gatekeepers and Dunedain rangers up against uh, just Amphlas hunters. I imagine the hunters are probably going to get overwhelmed here. He's uh, brought a lot of them as this Amphlas player um, compared to like the gatekeepers. There's not as many of them. They're a lot more elite. But this was sent in by a member of the Discord. If you want to, uh, obviously... Send in your own stuff that may then feature on the channel. Then do join the Discord. It is in the link down below in the description. So, um, and also, you guys, if you are enjoying the content at the moment, please do uh, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. Do appreciate all the uh, all support. And, yeah, let's get on with the battle, I guess. So it looks like Ariador has won the skirmish fight. And Amphlas is going to pull back his archers, probably save his ammo and his men for uh, later in the game. I, I presume now Amphlas is probably going to just sit back. I don't know, it looks like Eriador should really be the one sitting back and Amphlas should be attacking because Amphlas is a much larger army. And has pikes, while uh, Eriador does not have pikes. We have like a lot of spears here, a lot of uh, axes. We even have some hobbits, some shire folk. They are here on the battlefield. Look at them. They're just absolutely dwarfed by these cavalry. Which do look awesome. The Eriodorian knights look amazing. I don't say so myself. Um, but yeah, it does look like we are now a bit in a bit of a stalemate waiting for the first person to attack. But I mean, this is supposedly this scenario. I've been told it's sort of like an Arnold Civil War. While we uh, just wait on them to push forward. Um, so yeah, it's like an Arnold Civil War. So if you don't know, like Arnold... Uh, I'm not quite sure in a precise date, but breaks up into about three uh, regions. Rudar, there's... Uh, and there's two others. I can't remember. Rudar is the only one I can definitely remember off the top of my head. Um, shows that I need to do some work on my uh, Middle Earth history. But yeah, so they all have like a bit of a civil war. And I guess this support so kind of represents that. Because Eriador sort of is Arnor in Rise of Mordor. Um, Amphlas doesn't look like anything like any Arnorian faction. It's kind of just a Gondor... Fives faction, but it does look pretty damn awesome. Um, but yeah, so I guess I will maybe do a little cut and wait until someone starts to actually... I don't know, I was about to say make a cut, but... I was about to say who's going to dare to cross the river, but it looks like it's going to be Eriador that's going to do it. He's going to send his Dunedain Rangers a little bit further forward. Start focusing these guys down. What's he focusing down? Spears. I wouldn't bother with that. I'd probably just try to shoot those archers more or the pikes. But swords are starting to come across as well. So what have we got coming across first? We've got Bree Men at Arms. The Men of Bree are here. The Men of Bree to me just reminded me of drunks and well Peter Jackson looking like an absolute mess. If you watch the if you watch the Lord of the Rings, that's all that Bree really has. A lot of drunk a drunk men. And in the Hobbit, there's a lot of drunk men. Oh, okay. So Bree has got or I'll probably end up calling Eriod or Bree quite a lot often because they do have mainly Bree units. They've got some Bree, Bree frontiersmen or bordermen over here. So they managed to cross this bit and they're going to try and do some flanking. You can see why Amphlas is playing for protective line. I do wonder whether um, these units like of the submod are going to overpower the Five of Mordor. Five of Mordor? Five of Gondor submod. Wow, you can go pretty deep into this. I thought it was like a really small river crossing here, but no, you can... Go quite wide. I guess this is all fordable. Yeah, so here we go. Looks at the Bree men at arms first in. Volleys coming in just to, you know, pepper down a few more of these spears. 
These guys don't look so as well armored. Oh, yeah, these are footmen. These aren't as good. Um, yeah, these guys are like knights in the center. Oh, here you go. The first clash of infantry. Swords versus spears. I'd say these guys should probably win. Or they certainly do a lot of good damage. Here, maybe not so much as pikes in this line. As more... Oh, what are these guys? These guys are maces. The Chetwood Merchant Bodyguards. Oh, these guys look cool. I do like these guys. They've got like a bit of a Rohirrim sort of helmet going on. Uh, well, it certainly looks like that, that helmet's used in the uh, Rohan sub mod. But these guys look pretty awesome. A Maceman unit. And then we've got more of these Chetwood Merchants. And we've got over here Bree Spearman. A long line of Bree Spearman. And we have some cavalry that charged in. I wouldn't have done this. Um, I probably would have just... Oh! But that was a good charge. I didn't see this. This one looped around and got into the rear, but it's going to die now. Some er Eriodorian Knights as well. A really good unit. Against Antflas Knights of Swords and more Antflas Knights Swords. See, I think there's Antflas Knights Swords and Spear variants. Not much difference, obviously, just apart from they have Swords and Spears. Um, and then what we've got here, we've got more Eriodorian Knights that have charged in here and more Bordermen over there. See, I don't know why you didn't mix it up. I just put the border men to attack here and the knights to possibly punch through a hole in the, uh, in, like, the line. I guess, actually, Eridor has got halberds. I didn't think of that. He's got two units of halberds. I would have sent the Shire folk up by now. Send the Shirelings in. Or the Halflings, the Shirelings. That's a mix of Shire folk and Halflings, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, the Shire folk aren't going to do much. You might as well just send them in. Or are they a personal bodyguard to the general? Because if they are, that's an honor to have halflings as your bodyguard. They've been known to kill witch kings and dark lords. But this just look very awesome. I do lo like Eriador with their like Arnor shields. They look really good. They do look like a very mixed like bag of like men just put together because Eriador at this point I guess doesn't have an army it's just like well Bree for instance it's its own sort of independent town and then all the other ones around that sort of area I guess are also pretty independent I'm trying to think of other towns that were from that area um, but yeah you can see their cavalry has been routed uh, that's a bit of a shame because there was a really u elite unit of knights there's lots of javis back here these definitely need focusing down um, oh, that's actually not a bad target there, all those Amphilus Knights. But I'd be shooting these uh, skirmishers with my archers. Could do some really good damage. But, I mean, this line looks like it's uh, not even really being engaged. Yeah, apparently it's... Yeah. But, yeah, this is not a good sign. <laughs> not many of them died. But the spears versus spears, I guess. So, that's expected. Over here, though, Bree is looking like he's also having a rough time. We will see what happens. Yeah, these border guards are not having much fun here. They need to pull them out. Charging them in the spears was a bad, bad mistake to start with. Certainly since it wasn't a really strong unit of cavalry. And then keeping them in combat, also not a great idea. Should have charged them in straight away. Not, and then retreated straight away. He's got halberds now to support this line. They're getting a lot of fire. You can see they're already pretty bloodied up. Getting a lot of fire from those hunters. Oh, they're actually losing here now. How? Oh, because this Shire folk are here. It's expected. They are very, very powerful, these hobbits. This unit here is actually losing. And it's uh, about to be sorted out. They've got units of uh, Amphalas Knights with swords ready. Look at the volleys in the background though. What is that even firing at? Oh, some uh, these guys, these gatekeepers. I wouldn't even bother firing at these guys. These guys are really good in melee and they are actually uh, crossbow units as well. But yeah, again here, these Eriador, um Oh no, these are Bree Bordermen, sorry. These Bree Bordermen, just pull them out. You could use them to f carry on flanking around, do some more damage. You've got the carry advantage, or did have the carry advantage. Um... Oh, that's a good volley. That was a really good volley. That's what I'm saying. You've got to just focus on these skirmishes. He's brought like six units of them. Don't allow him to use them. 
But yeah, more men running. I presume that's the cavalry. Yeah. Now this corner's freed up. Oof. Volley's just amazing. And then, uh, looks like, I don't know what's happening here. Bree is trying to get through. But, I mean, I don't think Bree should have been the one at uh, attacking, really. It should have been Anflas. Because, I mean, Anflas has a larger army. And possibly stronger units. Look at these little hobbits down here, just little dwarf, little dwarf by them. Um, it's just ridiculous. I mean, what have you got here then? Oh, Arnorian Swordmaster. So he's got some elite sort of uh, units to go in still. Look at the officer. That looks goddamn awesome, doesn't he? Oh, the detail. Then we've got the general, and that's it, really. They've got all their units committed. I mean, it's a huge long line you need to commit to. This unit's not even been attacked. They've got a whole unit they could flank around with. And I think Amphlas has the reserves that he could do so. He could send this unit in. He's got Amphlas Knights of Sword that could just fit in here. Or he could send that one through. And he could start surrounding, like, a lot of uh, units of Eridor. And he could do the same here. Like, these units on the side could flank around. The cavalry's gone. The Halberdiers need to really get engaged a bit more. They're not really pushing these Amphlas footmen back. But this is where they should have been pushing hard on the flanks. The center just doesn't need to be attacked. Um, like, that much. Oh, the cavalry's back, but it's just getting attacked by Amphlas swords. I love these Chetwood merchants, though. They do look awesome. The pikes as well aren't helping. Anflas just seems he's just ready for this. Eriador seems like he doesn't have the numbers or the quality to get through. The enemy is attacking our general. Look at that. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Apparently the general's being attacked. Um, oh, I think he's been shot with arrows, maybe. Yeah, look at this. The pikes. Keeping Talbadeers at bay now. Well, I really thought these men-at-arms would have broken through. I mean, they're actually... The Bree men-at-arms are losing here to these Anflas knights now. They are focused now. That's really good by the gatekeepers. Focus this little corner down. They're still trying to desperately shoot these guys. They've only killed 14 of them. Jeez. Um, yeah, if I was the gatekeepers, I would probably be getting really close. Oh, the Shire folk broke. No. How dare they kill these poor little hobbits. Look at this. Just a solid little wall that they've got going on here. Some men break out. Oh, that guy just got impaled through the face with a spear. Don't think you can physically do that. But I like it. He's got the strength of an ox, that man. But yeah, I mean, they've got plenty of reserves. Um, plenty of archers, plenty of skirmishes. i just start maybe flanking around with units. Why not? Eridos looks like he's in a rough bit of trouble. A rough bit of trouble. And look at this. Oh, okay, so an Amphlas unit has actually pushed out, and it's getting surrounded by archers. Oh, no, it was getting surrounded by archers, and then the archers are being surrounded by more Amphlas knights. What a chaotic battle this is. Everyone else is in a nice, solid line, and then you guys are just surrounding each other. Dunedain Rangers as well. They probably would have done okay in combat. Oh, and then there's the Shire folk. They threw some, like, some sort of projectile and they're charging in again. Ah, uh, yes. Can they get any kills? Oh my gosh, that guy just, like, charged in and got, like, obliterated. <gasps> they got a kill! 
That man died down there. There's a guy that down the died down there to <laughs> Shire folk. No! Stop stabbing them. Ah uh, yes, they're falling back, they're scared of the Shire folk. And the Shire folk are moving on in. Oh no, they're retreating. The wrong way though. Bless them. They might need to start setting up those swordmasters though. I know they've got nothing left, but their front line is starting to break. But yeah, look at this, these gatekeepers. Just getting point blank and focusing down these Anflas Knights of Spears. Not a bad idea. They need to try every trick in the book right now to get through. Look at that. Solid line. You'd just be like as a gatekeeper. Just pick my target. You could at this range. Oh. That guy there has been peppered with arrows. And then there's some now... Oh, it's that pretty much... Men at arms, you know, the brokes will turn. But yeah, this is a problem now. Anflas has won this flank, and he could flank around. I presume he's going to at some point. I don't know. Um, the gatekeeper's coming over. Are they going to have to go into combat, I wonder? Look at them in their long line. And their long, slow march as well. Pretty bloodied up, and they still actually not lost a single man. They're pretty beefy. They're one of the best units that Eriador has to offer, I think. Yeah, I'd start setting up these guys if I was you, Eriador. He's going to need them. Look at this unit here though, this is a concern. They're just gonna they're just gonna allow the gatekeepers to shoot them. Amplast knights. No, you should have just stood your ground. These gatekeepers are solid. They are a solid unit. They would definitely hold looking at their armor. They're fighting over here and they're doing okay. They've got swords, shields. Crossbows. I do love that they have their shields on their back and they take them off. That is a, that is an excellent thing. I do love that. And now in comes some Bremen arms. Okay, so they're... Oh, no, these aren't Bremen arms. These are the gatekeepers. Yeah, they're kind of sort of in. They're sort of chipping away at this flank. More gatekeepers here. Going to just take out this Amphalas Knight unit. So having a bit of success there, but over here, not so much. They are uh, surrounded now. Here comes the charge into the back. Look at these Eriador spears. Like, oh god, no, there's men behind us. They all, they all looked around over their shoulder and thought, nah, it's fine. They'll disappear. No. They're here. Anflas is uh, doing some big flanks now. And those reserves still aren't moving. Has he forgotten about them? Is he condemning his men to die? How dare he. Well, look at this. It's just no one's even attacking now on this front. They're waiting for who will move first. But yeah, I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, it's not that many dead down here actually. It's spear versus spear. I'm not surprised. But just a still a solid shield wall. These Amphalas knights are holding. This guy here. Look at him. He's dueling out here, going a long way. What's he doing? Oh, chop him, chop him down, spear him, there we go, spears him, and these two are just stabbing him in the back, could have saved, the oh, they got him though, revenge is sweet, and somehow this Chetwood merchant's got to the back lines, he's having to go to some pikes, But yeah, they're still not able to break through. I'd have possibly focused on these pikes because they're actually still quite vulnerable. The spear lines move quite a long way forward. I don't think they have any archers left. And certainly no bows which could arc over to hit them. But here we go. So it looks like the swordmaster is being sent up. I'd send as many of these swordmasters over here because they're flanking hard. Um, and you could flank that flank. Counter flank. Um, the gatekeepers actually... I mean, these units here are probably condemned. But the gatekeepers are sort of saving this flank. Holding it well. They're winning decisively here. We've got Anflas Knights. Oh, Footman, sorry. Now join the fight. I think these Footman are still not going to be able to beat these gatekeepers. More gatekeepers firing out. I mean, they're actually nearly through here. Look, this thin line. Only about two men holding it, like the line is two men thick. And then another line just is joining the fight, so don't mind me. Don't mind me as uh, 
and Flash ends up more men. Oh, and here comes some Arnorian uh, Swordmasters. Oh, God, that was a good fire volley. Yeah, I had a feeling Anfast was saving his ar ammo just for this unit, these units. Oh, he's got so much ammo left. Well, not it's not a lot, but it's enough for late game to just devastate these units. He's got to get them in there quickly. He's attacking a really strong position. Over here, he's also doing the same. Oh, yeah, look at these skirmishes. He's just going to have a field day. Flanking round, they're going to get all of these uh, these sword masters, which have already broken through to their spear line, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter they've broken through to the spear line when they're about to get surrounded again. These poor men. There's absolute chaos over this side. It's more ordered over everywhere. Everywhere else, it's more ordered. Here, chaos. Look at that. Ugh. There's like weird pockets of spears going on. There's... Yeah, here we go. I'm, I want to watch this volley. Oh, gosh. This is the skirmishes just into the back of them. Jeez. That is horrifying. These poor... These units cost so much as well. And they're already down to like 30 men. Don't even know... Oh, the other one's somewhere. Might be already broken. I think it is. Oh no, it's down here. It's fighting pikes. So it's not going to do well there. Having a rough time. There you go. That side's just routing now. The left side is fully gone. The general might as well come across. The general can come across. He can probably route quite a few of these skirmishes. Yeah, here we go. Lots of breaking. I never would have said the tide of battle was ever really in favor of Eridor. It was. He was always up against it. Especially with uh, Anflas having the larger army. And knowing that these Fife of Gondor units are pretty beefy. Oh my gosh, that's a really big unit that's breaking as well. Oh no, it's not breaking. Oh, they've actually... Oh, damn, I was thinking for some reason that this was uh, Eridor. But no, Eridor has broken. Yeah, the flanks are starting to go. And now, oh, look at this. This is a huge break down the center. Look at the amount of bodies... They've just fallen on these pikes. Oh, chop down though there. Was that pikeman? I imagine being one of these brave sword masters. Oh, he's actually got another one. You're stood right in front of him. Just chop him down. There you go. You can get this guy. Get this guy. Get one of them, please. Or I'm wasting my time looking at you. I'm wasting my time. Waste my time. Where's the general? Here he is. The general just charged into the back of these uh, skirmishes. Break them. There we go. Oh no, the general's going. Where's the general going? Oh, he's going to charge into the spear line? And pikes? Oh no, that was not a good move by uh, Eridor's general. <laughs> that was not a good move. Just charge into the skirmishes. Break them, then you can, I guess, sort out your line again. I mean, it's already very much against you. They do look awesome, those Eridor Knights. Oh. But yeah, I mean, this is never going to be healthy for Calvary. I mean, he's actually not lost... Oh, no, he's lost three men. Pull out, please. They just... Ch look at this. There's spears and pikes. I don't think how that could ever be good. And Flas has got so many units left. So many... Eridorian Knights. And here we go. The last stand of the infantry really is over here. Some gatekeepers. I think if you brought an army of gatekeepers, you actually do okay. A, because you've got crossbow ability. And they're pretty good in melee. They're really good, I'd say. Imagine them in the siege battle. They'd be excellent. Look at these men cheering away over here. And there you go. I think the general's about to break, isn't he? Yeah, he's not having a good time here. Why he didn't just charge these skirmishes? He's got so many kills and it would have been so satisfying. Look, he's just charging on the pikes. And there we go. A close victory for Anfalas, apparently. I don't think it really was. Um, he still lost. Wow. He massively outnumbered uh, Eriador. 
Um, yeah, I think area door should have been the one defending and I'm flashed attacked, really. But uh, there we go. They were the end results. I mean, Amphas brought a lot of these uh, Amphas knights uh, with spear and sword variants. Um, he brought footmen as well. I mean, oh, look at this. It's pikes. He had three of them. I thought he only had two, but 296 kills. Jesus. Skirmishes also got like, into the 200s. Um, Amphas knights with spears, 205. 265 with the sword variant. Um, and then, so thanks for Boris for sending this in. Um, it was actually quite fun to watch. Never see like classic river crossing battles anymore. Um, usually on Total War, mainly because there isn't as many maps for them as there used to be, like on the older Total Wars. Um, but yeah, that was pretty fun to watch. And uh, we'll quickly look at Eridor, who was played by Dam Dam Exus. Um, his probably his best unit is like his Breed Men at Arms, 166. His Arnorian Swordmasters could have got a lot more kills, but they just got focused down by uh, Javis. They really needed to turn around after they charged in and take out those Javis. So 106 kills for them for the best. Chetwood Merchant Bodyguards, 126. His uh, Gatekeeper is actually 164 and 155, also very solid. And his uh, Bree Spearman did okay, but the, Bree the Spears are not great. And then his, uh, oh, his Dunedine Rangers actually did the best. 241 kills, geez, and his Cavalry. 95 kills, these are the Dorian Knights, they actually look pretty nasty, like, they could do a lot of damage, and he kind of wastes them a bit, charging them straight into spears. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this Rise of Mordor battle, um, if you did, then please leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to show your support uh, for the channel, be much appreciated. Um, and until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you guys later.